<laughs> ensuring that we have the back of the Lawrence yeah! 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 As people just sang that song, Solidarity Forever, you think about the roots of that song. Most of us are second and third and fourth generation unionists. But the folks who built our union, whether it was NYSADA, whether it was UFT, whether it was NYSIT, whether it was any of the different locals. Can you hear me now? Whether it was any of the different locals that are standing here, whether it was our private sector brothers and sisters, whether it was the PBA that's representing the cops that are out there that haven't shut us down. Every, and the retired teachers, who some of us are very, very jealous about. We stand on the shoulders of people who struggled. Who in some ways, when I was at the UFT, handed me that contract and said, you go enforce it. You go keep the power. You go make sure that we build on things. And many of us now have to face, whether it's in Nassau County, whether it's in Washington, D.C., whether it's in Wisconsin, we are facing a situation where the polarization and the demonization in this country has gotten so great that we have to fight again some of those original battles. And that is what's happening to the Lawrence teachers. And that is why it is absolutely essential that those of us, whether in Nassau, whether in New York City, whether in Suffolk, whether in the entire United States of America, those of us that have contracts, those of us who have decent relationships with our school boards, we have to be here over and over and over and over again to defend and support our brothers and sisters in Lawrence. <laughs> Lori doesn't even know this. I traveled these streets a lot when I was in college because my college roommate was from Lawrence. And I remember, I remember we used to tease each other mercilessly about not just which schools were better. I was from Clarkstown, she was from Lawrence. But I remember being here, being in her kitchen, hearing her friends, hearing her sisters, the pride that people had for going to Lawrence High School. That became a magnet in the five towns. Indeed, it became a magnet for a whole bunch of other people to move here. Shoulder to shoulder, generation to generation, the schools that teachers built because they believed in public education, the schools the community built because it believed in public education. So I wanted to be here today not just to yell and scream at the board. And I got a lot of anger at that board. And I got a lot of anger for three reasons. But to actually ask that board, ask that board to have the same convictions for other people's children as they have for their own. This country and I say that, I want to be very clear. I am a very observant Jew. For those of you who don't know, my partner is a rabbi. And every Friday night, every
every Shabbos, I try to come back to New York City and I try to do my other job of being the Rebbitzin. I believe in Judaism. I believe in its tenets. But its tenets require that we take care of the poor. Its tenets require that we educate all children. And just like every single teacher here welcomes the kids with special needs from the yeshivas to come back to our schools, we ask this board to appreciate every other child that is in the Lawrence School District. That is what our Jewish teaching teaches me. That is how I grew up. That we have that social contract. That we have that covenant. But it's more than that. New York State values require this. The New York State Constitution, which we all believe in, requires a sound, basic education for all kids. And it's more than that, too. The United States Constitution, the Constitution that allows the freedom of religion, the free exercise of the religion, that Constitution requires justice and equity. And today, on the 63rd anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education, this school board needs to understand justice. Because justice for one means justice for all. And that is why I wanted to be with you today. This is a righteous fight. It's a constitutional fight. It's a fight for justice. It's a fight for opportunity. You are fighting for more than a contract. You are fighting for justice for all of God's children. So I want to say one more thing. It's been seven years. It is always darkest before the dawn. I want them to understand that they will now have the light shined on them like it has never been shined on before. Yeah. That no one can talk about values unless we're talking about the value of all of God's children. That is what you're doing. It's not just class size, it's not just a contract, but you are walking a righteous walk, a neshama walk, a tikkun olam walk, a repairing the world walk, a justice walk. And that is why the FT not just being your national union, but that is why this little five foot two person are going to do everything I can, backed by the 1.6 million AFT, and fight, and fight, and shine the light until you have a fair contract, and do whatever we can nationally to shine that light here till you have a fair contract. Thank you. Thank you.